into the microphone, pull your mask down so the two commissioners who are at home on Zoom can hear us all. So time being six o'clock, I will call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation. One nation. Indivisible. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. The echo kind of messed me up there. All right, Patty, uh, roll call, please. Wanda? Um, by phone. Don? Here. Dan? Here. Joe? Here. 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 We have a quorum, and item number three. Does any commissioner have a reason to abstain for a financial or a non-financial conflict of interest? I do not. I do not. No. None. I do not. There being no conflicts, uh, item number three is closed. Item number four is approval of the agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? And entertain a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Second. Don, you want to turn your microphone on there? Thank you. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to approve the agenda as presented for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Agenda is approved. At uh, this time, would anyone care to make a public comment? All right, public comment is closed with no comments. Moving on to item number five, approval of minutes from the March 2nd, 2021 meeting. I would move to approve the minutes of the March 2nd, 2021 meeting. Second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Kettering <laughs> to approve the minutes from March 2nd. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item six. First is the claims. I did want to make note um, under the commissioners, there is an EMC insurance payment of $10,000. That is for the McAllister case. And under the government buildings, there was a bill for about 2,400 that was listed to the P and D and that is actually Wynn Nelson. And then there is a $50,000 payment to YAPG and that covers the 25,000 for 2020 and the 25,000 for 2021. So the remaining due on the 250,000 that was committed in 2018 is 140,000. Any other questions on the claims? You said that 10,000 was for the McAllister claim? Yes. I would entertain a motion to approve the claims as presented. So moved. Second. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox to approve the claims as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Claims are approved. We have the auditor treasure report and the pooled cash report. So I did pull those reports from 2021 out of curiosity just to monitor the general fund. And comparing to this time of last year, we have $1.7 million dollars more in our general fund than we did in 2020. And that's about the same versus 2019. The reason being is the COVID dollars. And much of those dollars, I had Patty print out, did you give a copy of this to everyone? No. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, I had Patty print out um, the assigned dollars that are residing in that general fund, just so everybody knows where they're at and for everyone's uh, benefit in the audience. We have assigned um, three about 3.5 million for next year's budget, 
Uh, the road and bridge uh, special fund is almost 1.4 million. We do have an old uh, assignment for jail improvements at about 36,000. Uh, we have some county accumulations, which would be for ambulance and um, truck for emergency management. That's about 170,000. Uh, James River Bridges, a million. We have 50,000 for COVID response and 50,000 for state's attorney. Um, and many of those dollars we had to assign at the end of the year because of the COVID dollars. So just so we're all on the same page, um, because later I will talk about the Patriot Act that was just signed. So any, um, any other comments on the uh, auditor treasury report or pooled cash reports? I would entertain a motion to approve those reports. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Healy to approve the auditor treasurer and pool cash reports. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. All right, that's it for item number six. We are at item number seven, someone who has lots of items on the agenda, Mr. Salachik. You wanna start at the top or? Yep, we'll start at the top. Um, gravel bids, we uh, went out for bid for gravel. Uh, Go ahead and pull your mask down so we can hear you better, thanks. East of Highway 81 or east of the Jim River is what we advertised as. Um, had two bidders. One was uh, Terry Shrum and the other one was uh, Mark Wirt, uh Pitt north of Fleegs. Um, I guess I would recommend uh, to go with the, the Shrum Pit. Um, he was about a dollar five cheaper per ton. Need a motion for that? Need a motion for that. Make a motion to approve the bid for the Terry Shrum gravel pit. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Clemish, second by Kettering to approve the bid from Terry Schramm for gravel. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Wanda, did you want to vote? I did. Oh, I said it at the same time as somebody else. Sorry about that um, and aye. So we have five ayes. No nays, motion carry. Thank you. Next is uh, the rip wrap and rock bids. We had uh, Spencer Corey's and LG Everest. Um, Spencer Corey's, I, I would recommend that we approve the bid for Spencer Corey's. Is there any questions on the bid? No. That's them hauling it, I assume, or us hauling. Was that higher? Were they higher on most items? LG Everest was. Okay. We're, we're hauling that though, or are they hauling it? Either or. Um, we, can, uh, we can either haul it ourselves or I could go off of our uh, contractor list that we approved back in uh, February. They've got a delivery fee. Delivery charge on there, Dan. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, are they further away than the other uh, one, though? Where's the other quarry as that in Sioux Falls? The other quarry, it would be uh, Spencer. I believe that's in Iowa. Spencer. Okay. They have. They do have a pit in Iowa, and then they have a pit up by Sioux Falls. Quarry. So you wanted this Spencer. One, that's the one yep. you recommend. Move approval uh, of the highway superintendent's recommendation for the Spencer Quarry bid. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve the Spencer Quarry bid for riprap. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Next would be to, uh, there's a milling bid there from Brown County. We just need to uh, approve the bid 
from Brown County for the milling for Loiza construction. Um, this here will be used uh, on our improvement project on Eastside Drive. Move approval. Second. So I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve the milling and reclamation bid for Brown County. Further discussion? For Loiza construction. For Loiza. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Next would be a uh, resolution for support for the Highway 52 bike path. Uh, back in 2019, we applied for a grant to uh, overlay the bike path from the bottom of Chalkstone Hill to um, over by the fish hatchery there. Um, this go around, I would uh, it'd be nice to be able to finish the trail from the bottom of Chalkstone Hill to West City Limits Road. Um, Attached, there's a couple quotes from uh, the previous company that did the paving on the path and then also for the concrete work for the field approaches. But I guess the main, uh, main thing here would be uh, approval for the resolution. Move approval, Clemish. I'll second. I have a question afterwards. Okay, and so I have a uh, motion by Clemish, second by Kettering to approve the resolution to support the Highway 52 bike path grant application. Is it, Further discussion. Mike, is the Game Fish and Parks planning on taking it from where they, this year or next year and the next? Farther west? Yes. That I, I do not know. They indicated in a, a meeting that I was at that they were planning to do that. So that'd be nice. That'd be a nice addition. Right. Yeah. And th this resolution just to apply for grants with the state for the, like last time was it like a 70, 30 or 80, 20? It was split? 80, 80, 80 20. 20. Yeah. And, and I've had a lot of good compliments on it. That path definitely needed it. And when you drive by it, in the summer, it's heavily used, so it's a it's a good thing. Thank so, you. so given the bids and assuming twenty percent, our share would be about twenty one thousand. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Did he? Okay. Aye. Sorry, I have bad hearing. So, all opposed, nay. Motion carries five zero. I'll try to speak up. No, oh, it's Joe that I didn't hear. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Entrance applications. Um, first would be for, uh, uh, we'll go to the one for Christopher Hughes. It'd be over there uh, by uh, Nottingham Drive. Um, it's actually Hidden Hollow Drive is what it's off of, but uh, Nottingham Drive, that's uh, Highway 52. That's a, Yeah, that's the second one in our packet. We have the woven one first. Um, I met with him. Um, I guess I, I don't see no reason not to approve an entrance. Uh, 18 inch culvert. There's uh, minimal drainage there on that hillside. So I don't think it'll be an issue. Is that directly out onto the highway? Nope, that is, uh, that would be off uh, gravel. Um, okay. Probably be about a quarter mile off of Highway 52. I'd move approval. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Clemish to approve the entrance application for Hughes. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All, aye. All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. The next entrance app would be for Tyler Wubin, Gayville. Um, be on the north end of Gayville, just... Uh, north of Raider Avenue, which would be the farthest north street in uh, Gayville off of 451st. Um, it's not a development that they're building. It's a private, a private driveway into the north lot there. Um, 
and as of right now, he has no intentions of developing it into residential. Move approval, Clemish. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Fox to approve the entrance application for Wubin. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Next is uh, the Department of Transportation Amendments. Um, I don't know if you remember a few weeks back, we approved the uh, amendments. Um, they did not have our count, the county share added into them. And that's how they need to be approved. Nice um, try. Well, <laughs> it'd be better if we'd get these amounts. But. Yeah. That happens. It's... And I just want the motions that were made be previously in February, they stated the amendment number one and then the agreement number. Remember right there? Yep. Okay. So just basically the same. So we need two motions. And if you could include the title of each of those in your motion, that would be great. I would move to amend number two to the agreement, and that number is 614952. Second. So I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy, to approve the amendment number two to agreement number 614952 for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. So we need a motion to approve the amendment number one to agreement number 614992. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox to approve amendment number one to agreement number 614992 for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Next is... Uh, Federal Aid Bridge Program Resolution. I uh, planning on applying for two bridges for this. Um, the list. Each of you should have gotten a list of of uh, the bridges that we have in poor condition. Um, there are more bridges than this, but they have to be on. They cannot be on a no maintenance or minimal maintenance road. So this is the list that is put in. In front of us, uh, so we have to choose from the top, uh, the top few structures we have plans for already in place. Um, the first one's the Stone Church Bridge. Um, we're planning on doing the big grant on that one. The next one was uh, South Utica, Utica by the Gun Range. We replaced that this last fall. Um, the next one down be on the Scotland Road. We're planning on doing a box culvert with that. Um, the next one's being replaced uh, hopefully here in the next month. Uh, another one being replaced with culverts, another one with culverts, and then uh, the stip bridge that we've been waiting for forever. Um, these next two would be on uh, township roads. One on 432nd Avenue, and the other one would be on, I'd be on the north end of Marindale Lake. Uh, 304, uh, this map's too little for my eyes to read. 298th Street. You guys have any questions on any of this? Would you say the the lowest big score last year that they did on this the program? The lowest big score, the lowest modified big score to be awarded last year was 38. Yeah. So the highest we have in place right now would be 33 to choose from off the list. We don't yeah. know if we don't try. Exactly. Yeah. And we need to always apply. Right. So they know we're interested in it. I'm wondering if, if this wouldn't be... a a good idea to 
do some pre-engineering with some of the COVID dollars if we're able to do that. Uh, so we can kind of get a jump on some of those because we, we do have extra funding and in all likelihood, we're not gonna get a lot of these chosen because of the big score. And it might be behoove us to jump ahead because I'm sure a lot of other counties are gonna think of the same thing. Might be, might be something we can do to get these replaced, so. It'd be something to look at because a lot of these structures are yeah. smaller structures. Um, exactly. I don't know if, how much money we should stick into it out of our own pocket. Mm -hmm. um, just looking at the costs of the bridges that mm -hmm. what they actually cost us now, you know. Because going through the federal program, how much, how many times more does it cost us to do it than to do it ourselves? You know, like these are pretty expensive. When you looked at the quotes on these, didn't you include quotes? So like the, uh, right. It's 500, it's a half a million dollars to do each of these bridges. So if we didn't have to do the federal program, it would be cheaper to do like a state program. Well, and like the quotes we have for these two bridges that we're applying for, if we were to pay for them out of our own pocket, it would be half the cost. Right. So it's, Federal pro, it's nice to have federal dollars, it's but sometimes the it, strings but... attached to a federal program are much higher. Right. So. Yep, because you gotta go it, through all the engineering and. Yep, and this program, we don't know if we're gonna do it every year or not, if they're gonna make it available. All right. That's. Is the challenge. It's like uh, the second bridge on the list. We received money um, back in 2019. They awarded counties, they gave them their percentage of the dollars. And that's what that money was used for, was to replace that bridge south of Utica on the gun range last year. So it was, right. it still come out of the budget, but that was money yeah. from this program. Sure. But then yeah. now they change it. So now you have to apply for, for the funding. So you right. need us to approve tonight, just to apply? Um, I need approval for the resolutions for each of the bridge numbers listed here for them two bridges. One motion. Each sub are the two that are written apply. Yep. You want okay. one motion or two? We need one for each because you'll have to sign a resolution. Okay, gotcha. You want it by the structure number? Correct. Move approval of the resolution for structure number 68-040-1. Five, eight. Second. So I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve the application for structure number 68040158. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries five zero. I would move for the resolution to apply for improvement of structure 68-186-070. Hyphen hyphen second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Kettering to approve the resolution for structure 68-186-070. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. And then last would be uh, we need to approve uh, our engineers for bridge inspections this year. Um, we have four bridges this year for up for an inspection. Uh, we're doing the annual inspections on all four Jim River bridges. Um, I guess I would recommend Clark Engineering. Um, well, actually, it'd be IMEG um, for our 2021 bridge inspections. Is there a difference in cost between IMEG and all of the other 21 people? I reached out to one other firm, and it was pretty close. Um, no matter what, it's uh, twenty percent cost to the county. We don't. Have, we do not. The county does not pay uh, one hundred percent of this. 
I've been pretty happy. No. I make. Like last year, uh, it was pretty nice when they were out there on uh, uh, Johnson Bridge when they found the, the crack in the splice weld. Um, they knew we had the, the equipment to arrest the, the crack with the drill and the hole in it. Um, so it, it was kind of nice. They worked with us. We met them later on in the day and we were able to keep the bridge open. I, I think it's I feel it's important to maintain the annual inspections on these bridges. And just this year, what we caught on Johnson Bridge, it, it could have gotten a lot worse. And so I, I feel it's important. And the small money that is spent on that, I think it's well worth it for preventative maintenance. So I, I'd move approval. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Kettering to approve. Uh, I'm Meg for the 2021 bridge inspections. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. I'll just drop all this off tomorrow here. Okay. Do you need signatures on those? Well, it's, do um, you want to sign them now or you want to take them off? What were these? I can sign them after the meeting and you can pick them up tomorrow. How about that? Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. And next up, Mr. Liebsch, item number eight. I'll be quick. I'm just here to get approval for uh, spraying of right of ways on state roads. I believe you have a copy of the contracts. There's two original contracts. I need them both signed and notarized. So these are the same as last year? Yep. Had the costs changed at all? Mm, nope. Okay. Any questions? So no. when you Go ahead. So we'll need a motion to approve. Uh, probably the name of the contract would be good. This I would move to approve the State of South Dakota Department of Transportation Joint Powers Agreement for Weed Spraying Services by Yankton County. Second. So I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy to approve the agreement with the state for weed spraying. Further discussion? Jim, uh, when's the last time, th this is the contract that we're charging the state for spraying their highway. When's the last time, I guess we've raised the labor or, or anything like that? Last year. Last year, okay. Thank you. It's, it's the only one we don't, only thing we don't do at cost. Okay. All right, there being no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. You are good to go. All right. Can I just have my check those up tomorrow? Sure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks, Jim. Next is item number nine, Mr. Vetter. Good evening. Uh, we have two plats in front of you tonight. First one being Plat of lots 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25, Crestview Homes subdivision in the northeast quarter of section 21, township 93 north, range 56 west of the 5th principal Meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota. Move approval. Second. I have a motion second. By Healy, second by Clemish to approve the plat for lots 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 of Crestview Home subdivision. Further discussion? I do have a question. How come both of these plats say that the applicant is Bill Conklin? How come it doesn't say Dennis Breck? It should say Dennis Breck. 
it doesn't. Hmm. My guess what happened is, uh, my guess is Bill filled out the online thing at his. He did. Yeah, he's been filling out the online application for for the uh, plats. Okay. I don't know if there's a way around that or not. We should see if we can enter the app. Because I think that happens frequently where someone steps comes into the office, but all of the permitting is still handled online. Correct. We'll definitely yeah, check it, that. Yeah, it, it just... It doesn't seem right. God, yeah, I agree. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5 0. Platts approved. Second one's a replat of a portion of lot four of Kabisman Tract 8, located in the south half of the south half of section 11. And in the north half of section 14, Township 93 North, range 57 west of the 5th Principal Meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota, and a portion of Kabisman Tract 8, located in the south half of the south half of section 11, and in the north half of section 14, Township 93 North, range 57 west of the 5th Principal Meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota, hereafter to be known as Lots one and two, Kaiser K Canyon addition in the south half of the south half of section 11 and the north half of section 14, Township 93 North, range 57 West of the fifth principal meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota. Move approval of the plat. Second. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Clemish to approve the plat for uh, the Kaiser Canyon edition, lots one and two, and a replat of lot, a portion of lot four. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10, Mr. Archer. Good evening. Um, as we all know, Lori has retired um, and he has appointed me the director and I feel like it's time to appoint a deputy. Um, and my uh, recommendation is to point, appoint Michelle Gulkin. She's been here for 11 years. Um, in the last few years, she's really started taking some leadership classes and, and done a lot of education. Um, for her to be appointed, we will need the commission to vote on it. And then she'll have to do a oath. And grade nine, step six. So basically I kind of followed what you had put for a promotion, two grades or two steps. So she was making, let's see, right at that 52, 500, somewhere in there. Now it'll go to 54, 171. Okay. I'll move approval of Mr. Archer's recommendation uh, for Michelle Gokin. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox to approve the appointment of Michelle Gokin as Deputy Director of Equalization. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Congrats, Ms. Gokin. And to you want to swear in, in yeah. right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
come up here because then we'll have a face there. I'm Michelle Gokin. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of South Dakota. And the Constitution of the State of South Dakota. And faithfully discharge the duties of Jameson County Deputy Director of Equalization. And faithfully discharge the duties of Jameson County Deputy Director of Equalization. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. All right. Michelle, this... I'll have one with the remote so you can sign tomorrow. So currently, we have a staff of five. Um, we've been running a staff staff of six. I did some, as people that interviewed me know that I was looking to do some restructuring, um, trying to give the county the best bang for their buck. Um, we don't really have a person in our office that just does one thing. We don't have just an appraiser or just a clerk. They're all doing multiple things. And we're really working on cross training. Davison County has four assessors, three clerk and two admin for a total of nine. Brown County, three appraisers, two clerks, two admin for a total of seven. Brookings County, three appraisers, two clerks, two admin for a total of seven. Coddington County, three appraisers, three clerks, two admin. And right now we're sitting with one appraiser slash um, sales ratio because Jessica actually kept some of the clerk duties because I, um, I really want everybody to be well-rounded and learn multiple jobs, just not the job they're doing because you never know how long everybody's going to be there. Um, and then Jeff is an appraiser. And he also does GIS, which is the unique thing. We run six people in our office and we're the only one that runs a GIS in our office. Um, and then Andrea is a clerk, she does field work and she took on half of the sales ratio that Nancy was doing. And then you have now me and Michelle. So I want to advertise, historically we've always had two clerks. And I think with everybody taking on a little bit of that extra clerk, I think it's more beneficial to the county because um, we are going to get to the point where we're not going to have enough appraisers. And right now we're doing 600 and some free appraisals at a time and our, our parcel count keeps going up. So I think the best thing is to take some of the clerk's responsibility and spread it out and then hire an appraiser. In addition, I would like um, I would like to possibly um, make Jeff a deputy as well. It would cost the county $1,359. Jeff does the GIS, he does appraisal, and now I am the only one in the office that knows how to do our camera system, SQL, um, sales ratio, I mean, the market adjustments at the end of the year. So I'm going, I'm really kind of, Jeff is really computer, good with computers, and I kind of want him to, to learn some of that stuff. Um, currently, we're budgeted at right, $310,000 for salaries. We will be under $260,000 with those changes. And the biggest change to that is the salary matrix, because no, not everybody's starting where, you know, because Jeff has got nine years in, Andrew's got nine years in, Michelle's going on 11, so they were up there in a matrix, but when we, by putting this matrix in, it doesn't have those big shifts. Um, for example, Michelle would have been at close to $60,000 if we wanted to put the matrix in instead of 54. So I think it's working the way it's supposed to, but there was two deputies. When I was named deputy, there was a deputy there. It was Bobby. Um, 
I was named deputy at the same time we ran the office with two deputies at that time because I did most of the computer stuff and Bobby was doing most of the running the appraisal staff. So wasn't part of my original plan, but when I started looking at the numbers, um, I just feel like this year we're going to have cross train Jeff on this and then next year I'm going to flip it and then he'll have to do you know, have to work with abstracts and stuff like that. So I want to make sure that we have a very good understanding in that office across the board. So I'd like to ask for permission to um, offer Jeff to become deputy and I'd also like to advertise for an appraiser at grade, let's see, what's the appraiser grade? Five, six, 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 step one. Starting is 38, 720. Um, they will be, once they're certified, um, Usually there's another grade for certified and not certified in other counties. We actually had two separate, um, before we did this matrix, we had two separate um, pay scales for certified and not, which I'm thinking that in this case, once they're certified, they pass their test, they do all their books and they do their school, probably doing like a two, two step increase, which I must, you know, I thought when we had talked about this matrix, basically I go up to four, but I don't think that necessarily a new appraiser would just give them something to give them incentive to get, they got a year to get there, get certified, but you can't really send them out by themselves until they're certified. So it's nice to get them motivated. I mean, I got certified in like three months. Um, Matt, are you looking at um, keeping two clerks and then adding another appraiser? So adding another position? to equalization? No, okay. I'm looking so, at restructuring. So how many, how many, yeah, I guess how many people are you have in that office? You have five now so five. with Lori being gone and you're looking at six. Six. So instead of a, are you going from two clerks to just one clerk or, or I guess what's the end result Correct. gonna look like? Correct, Andrea will be the clerk because Jessica has been promoted to an appraiser. So Andrea will be a mm -hmm. clerk and then Jessica is taking on some of the sales ratio, which was Nancy's job, the second clerk. And then mm -hmm. Andrea is taking on some of the sales ratio yeah. as well. Um, so we will eliminate the clerk and have another appraiser, which that's really where our need is right now. I mean, we're not running near the staff that other counties are, but I still, I think we can handle it. And I think we can keep it going this way because of all the technology you guys approved. And we have long-term people, I mean, a lot of them and granted I'm gonna have two new appraisers to teach but yeah I just I just don't want to six months down the road you, you come in not saying you will and say I really need a clerk because I I don't I hope we're not going that direction and so I realize your need is for an appraiser and I guess I don't have an issue with that I just as as long as it's understood at least for, in my opinion is we're not going to add a clerk in six months or a year. And you can understand that. I, I okay. don't see a need to add another employee to that office at the current level of staff we have. Now, if we lose four people that have all that experience, you might have to relook at it, but we can run that office with the people we have right now and we can run it efficiently with the technology we have. I mean, the county blessed us. We went from probably one of the farthest behind for this size county when it comes to technology to we are getting to the point that we're the leaders in it and it's starting to show in the efficiencies and how we're able to do those kind of numbers. Matt, do you have to make any adjustments in job descriptions for these clerk duties or is that just uh, other assigned duties? Other is assigned. Okay. I mean, everybody, that office, I mean, when we started with ProVal, everybody sat down there and typed for like three months. We, we installed and had our camera system going. It's the fastest install ProVal has ever done and they've been around in 15 years. It helped that I knew what to do, but everybody bought into it and everybody buys in in my office. Everybody wants to learn more. So I haven't got any pushback when we were talking about, let's, you wanna learn this, you wanna learn that. Like for example, Michelle, even when she was an appraiser, she wanted to learn how to do an abstract. I gave her the abstract, so go do it. I'll look at it when you're done. 
that's how I got to learn too. My second year, my boss said the same thing. And then now she knows how to do an abstract. So, I mean, there's everybody in that office is pretty much striving for more knowledge. So I don't see any issue or any, we'll be a little bit busier, but I think we can handle it. I mean, I don't think, I know we can handle it. So. Any other questions for Matt? How much yeah. more is this gonna cost the, the county then? How much did you say? Um, technically, right now our budget is about $310,000 the way we were before. And we are gonna be under 260. And that's just salary, that's not counting all the taxes and stuff that go along with it. So, I mean, it's actually gonna save the county quite a bit um, because, you know, Lori was at a higher wage. I was at a higher wage. Nancy was at a higher wage because she'd been there for 25 years. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons I want, you know, to have Jeff come on as a deputy because I lost 17 years of experience and 25 years of experience in a two month period. So, Nancy knew a lot of things that, you know, some of us didn't know how much she actually did until she was gone. And same with Lori. I mean, there's a lot of slack to pick up. Matt, this is Joe. Yep. Uh, regarding the two deputy positions, do you see them um, having similar duties or, or uh, maybe some overlapping, but leave Jeff kind of over technology? And I see and Joe doing the. Office. I mean, like the abstracts, the, you know, the more of the office side of it. And I see Jeff as being training the appraisers along with me because I'm going to have two of them and also doing learning the technology stuff. Okay. Road if they want to try flipping it so then they can, you know, learn the other side too, we'll do it. But that's what I'm kind of thinking right now. Basically, I'm thinking of splitting what I did before and Jeff would still do appraising and because we get really busy for short periods of times so and then there's a little bit of dead space and then we get busy for short periods of time. But by, by giving everybody different tasks, it's gonna keep people busy the entire time. We're not gonna have as much downtime. Sure. Thank you. Patty, do you need a motion to allow him to hire a new appraiser and advertise? Okay. And is that because we don't have that many positions currently in your office? Well, technically it's within my budget, so I think I can do it, but I don't, and if you want to make a motion, you can. it's when you go outside of your be, budget. Yeah. And we're, we're also with that eliminating the it's really, it's really not necessarily creating a position. It's basically, you're not going to have a clerk. You're going to have an appraiser instead of a clerk. Correct. Right? Yep. So I mean, really, it's changing a clerk position to an appraiser. So last year we had six people, four appraisers, two clerks essentially, and now we want to go five one. Yep. So that's really what we're talking about here. Yep. And an appraiser can do what the clerks do, but yes. the clerks can't do what the appraisers do. So yes. And. We only are going to have to certify the new person. Everybody else is certified. Everybody else is bonded. So the, the cost is not going to be terrible um, to get them certified. Okay. With, with the two deputies, um, you know, you, you make a good point for it, but are, are there any other non-elected departments that have, you know, two deputies in that capacity? I, I know Jeff does a great job, but we, we are then a pay, paying more per more did he get a what, what kind of raise did he get when we redid the matrix nothing he didn't nothing. get a raise okay well i mean and right now you're tough because you, it's tough because you have two great people and who do you appoint deputy it's tough and now you really want to appoint both of them but i don't i really don't know if that's warranted in that position and how, how much of a raise is that going to be for $1,359? I'm sorry? $1,359. Per year? Yep. Okay. 
So in this building, we have essentially four main offices, I'll say, and, and veteran services and planning and zoning, but Gary's only got one person in your office with you. So we've got registered deeds has two deputies. Yep. Auditor has two deputies. Treasurer has two deputies. Yep. And, and the main reason that I really want is because it's going to be hard for me to give Jeff some of the stuff that, that I used to do as a deputy without, you know, he's already doing GIS. He's already doing appraisal. Um, I mean, we're way, way under budget, what we have budgeted. Any other questions for Matt on this? I think the bottom line is, is Jeff picking up some duty that warrants a deputy position. I would agree with that. Who's going to be your... You're, I guess, second in command. You're, you're out sick. Who takes over for you? Is it going to be Jeff or is it going to be Michelle? Jeff would be in charge of the appraisals and the computer. Okay, you're out like for six months. Who, you get something happens to you. Who fills in for you? I guess. But, well, that doesn't work for for a long time. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to have one person. The buck's got to stop somewhere. In, I guess, in my opinion, even in the auditor's office, they have a chief deputy and a deputy. So. I guess I see a potential conflict with you're, you're going to have them as equals. I mean, should you have one as a chief and one as a regular deputy? I am going to, um, the Jeff will be in charge for the appraisal staff and Jeff will be in charge of the computer stuff. Michelle will be in charge of the rest. If it's a computer decision, he needs to make it. If it's a, if it's a, a staff decision with the appraisers, he needs to make it. If it's office related or the stuff I do when I'm gone, Michelle will be it. I don't, I guess, I don't see a problem at all with, with um, having that problem. I mean, I, our office runs fairly seamlessly all the time. We don't have those kind of issues. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but. Joe, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I was just going to, you know, make the comment. I, I've seen similar, you know, systems and scenarios and I, they can work um, in regards to, you know, a long-term absence. I think at that point we would either under your recommendation or de depending on circumstances, we would appoint a, uh, interim director to take on that ultimate duty or ultimate role. So, Matt, I, I appreciate your effort to redesign and 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 uh, look for better ways to do things. And uh, you know, I, I guess I just rely on you. If it if it's not working, you're going to have to make the changes. So I. would if you're waiting for a motion, I'd move approval of his recommendation. I second. So it, it, the recommendation for, can we do them both in one motion? Probably two. So are you talking about uh, uh, Jeff being deputy? We'll do that one first. That one first? Okay. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to give Matt the authority to offer a deputy position to Jeff. Yep, and I'll have to bring him back here. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Dan? I voted. Okay, I didn't hear you, sorry. Yeah. And aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries 5 0. So now we need a motion to allow um, Matt to advertise for another appraiser. So moved. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to. Um, advertise for another appraiser for the discussion. And that's eliminating the clerk position. Yes. Good. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks Matt. Congratulations Michelle.
Item number 11, uh, cyber insurance. We had originally um, the intent to do this, but we never officially approved the expenditure. And I believe that's why it's on our agenda tonight. So in your pack, it is a quote for that. I do have a question. The quotation says it's valid only until February 11th, 2021. Is it extend to at least today? That I cannot answer. What did she say? The quote <laughs> okay. says it, it expired February of 21. So yeah, we may need to confirm that or, or possibly proceed contingent upon the quote not changing or something. I think, yeah, the original intent was to have this approved right away and we never did, so. So, uh, Joe, would you like to make that an official motion? Um, can I say one? It will change because it's not a full, the quote before was for a full year. Right. The, um, Ryan had said that it, it won't be, it might be a little less. So how about a not to exceed? Yeah, I would be comfortable with that because I'm not sure. I assume we're not technically covered now, but um, I don't know if they on. You know, if they if they're going to backdate the coverage or not. So I would, I would. If uh, we're not, if we're not technically covered, wouldn't we? Wouldn't it be a little less? Yes. Yep. So if we make the motion not to exceed, then it'll be any number under that. I got that, but aren't they getting two months free It'll be less with a, no coverage for the county? It'll be less than what the quote says. Okay. Dr. Ryan. Okay. Well, I, I would make the motion um, to uh, uh, accept the quote for cybersecurity uh, on the amount not to exceed a policy premium of $1,218. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the quote for cyber insurance not to exceed 1218. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries five zero. Almost seven. So item number 12 is the JDAI discussion. So on Friday, um, we had a meeting of um, the committee. Uh, so Don and I met and Deb was there. Um, we had uh, the judge, uh, someone from uh, court services, the police department, um, Boys and Girls Club, and Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health. So of the folks listed as parties at the top of the memorandum of understanding, those folks participated in, it was almost an hour and a half discussion and we discussed uh, mainly surrounding Boys and Girls Club uh, being a partner in this agreement. We didn't discuss at any length um, how it would work under the Davison and Brown uh, structure of where the state's attorney, state's attorney's office takes the lead in um, this JDAI initiative. So the, the path forward right now is on April 6th, a state committee meets to review the MOU that will be forwarded to them. And that's what we're looking at tonight is the commission needs to decide if we want to go through with this process. And so at that state meeting, um, they will review our MOU and then give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and essentially proceed that through the chain of command for further review at that time, we would fill out the complete application for how it would be structured in our county. This MOU was based on essentially 
all of the MOUs from the other counties. Um, I took a look at at least three or four of them um, and we changed the names on the document essentially. So back in February, you saw a copy of the Brookings document. And so this one has been adapted for Yankton. So on the very back page, we have the first judicial court, we have the county commission, we have Yankton School District, Gayville Vallen School District, the sheriff's office, state's attorney's office, the chief of police here in Yankton, uh, court services, South Dakota Department of Corrections, the regional manager for Department of Social Services, uh, Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health, and Yankton Boys and Girls Club, and lastly, Human Services Agency. So what this does is it outlines the intent of the um, Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, the purpose, uh, period modification. We did change the meetings um, and we did start with meetings will occur monthly to begin and then at least quarterly thereafter. Several of the um, MOUs just included quarterly, but we felt it was important uh, once we got going down the road to have monthly meetings to, to get this off on the right foot. So that was one minor change that was made to the document um, that you saw in February. But otherwise, the, uh, the model itself is taken from, is it the Annie E. Casey Foundation? Uh, right off their website is where that model comes from. So the committee leadership co-chairpersons would be court services and the state's attorney's office. And that's fairly consistent across the agreements uh, for the other counties. Any questions on this? Maybe I, maybe I missed this, but does this memorandum of understanding decide who who's going to be the primary agency responsible? No. I mean, are we talking Boys and Girls Club or State's Attorney's Office or, or is this no. just a memorandum of understanding? Yep, it's just a memorandum of understanding that says the parties associated with this see value in this process being applied to our county. Um, it does okay. not state who's the responsible party for essentially the employee who would be in charge of executing many of the, the tasks associated with this. That okay. I feel needs further vetting. Um, like I said, on the Friday meeting, we heard heavily from the Boys and Girls Club and how they could fill that role, um, but we have not heard how that role would be filled through the state's attorney's office. Uh, we did take a quick poll on that a phone call, and if you look at just one vote per agency, we're about 50-50. But that's without hearing from the state's attorney's office and their vision for how this would fit into our county. Okay. So I do think it probably at our next meeting, which is April 6th, our next official meeting, um, we would probably be able to report a little bit more on that. Madam Chair? Yes. The only, the only other thing I might suggest for parties, um, and I'm absolutely fine moving forward as it's written, but in the future, I don't know if it makes sense to have um, Irene School District or Bonholm School District, because both of those districts come, come into the county. Yeah. And, um Commissioner Healy, this is Deb Lilly. Actually, um, when I was reviewing that, that did come up um, because obviously we do have some in court services that do attend those other uh, school districts. So that's why um, that first section. At, at the end of uh, number one, it says, and other parties as amended. So that's where if they wanted to become involved, that that is how we could add them to it. Okay, thank you.
So is that to say then they may or may never have anybody that's involved in the program, but they have equal voting rights with uh, Dr. Stanage? Or... Oh, sorry. I think I shut your mic off accidentally. <laughs> yes, actually, Don, yes. And so I, I think as, anytime you add a new member to the group, you have to take that into consideration, yes. Any other questions on the memorandum of understanding? I think I'd move approval of uh, the MOU for Yankton County Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative Committee. Second. I'd second. So I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the Yankton County Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative Committee Memorandum of Understanding. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Yes. Before we leave that item, uh, there was a question raised about, I believe, Commissioner Clemish and Kettering are going to that, that meeting out in Rapid and and so there was a concern about whether or not we needed to move our April 6th meeting, because I believe it starts pretty early in the morning on the 7th. Like, it's like first thing. So just wanted to um, bring that up before we left that item. We should probably decide that right now, because we, we have one meeting, but... So your meeting is on Wednesday. So are we looking at moving this commission meeting to Monday, April 5th? Oh gosh, it's Easter Monday. We also have ditch board on April 6th. Yep. So that would mean Joe, Wanda and myself would have to be at ditch board. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So we probably wouldn't have to move the ditch board meeting, but we do have to move the commission meeting. Okay. As long as, all right, one, it's at one, uh, one in the afternoon. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I guess if, if it wasn't, uh, Don and Dan would just have to drive in the dark, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I checked and it's fine. Okay. Thanks. So that week, either we do it Monday or probably Thursday, so the 5th or the 8th, which would be better? Well, the 8th, I think, will still be out. Oh, there. gosh, yes, sorry. So what am I thinking? I, I, I would say the 5th is probably not a very good day to do it, the Monday after Easter, so the 9th. We work that day, don't we, the 5th? County employees work on the 5th. Kids are out State of employees don't do not. On Monday? Yeah, Governor. Um, my understanding, well, my understanding is the UJS is not working Easter Friday or Easter Monday. And, and likely, I'm sure we got Board of Adjustment too, right? So if we have that on an odd date. And I'm sure we got some got stuff for drainage and so, so. We have boredom adjustment on the 23rd. Is that what you're talking about? Or not board of adjustment, the equalization on the 23rd. I see what you're saying. So we can't do it. And we can do a Friday meeting in the morning. I don't know about that. I'd have to check my calendar, which I don't have here. Can we do the sixth, but move it up? Uh, move the morning. Forward. Well, I guess my my concern, Joe, is what I said. I'm I'm sure we have board of adjustment. I'm sure we have drainage or some other 
um, legal things is what Gary mentioned. Are we going to move all that to an odd time that we normally don't have a meeting? Well, we're moving the, we either have to move the time or we have to completely move the day. Okay. Looking at that week, the evening of the fifth is probably our best option. I'm fine with that. I'm good with the evening of the fifth. A lot of people, I'm good with that. A lot of people travel for Easter and I don't know. I know I know kids are out of school that day. My vote's the fifth because we can't do it the sixth, seventh, eighth, or ninth. I'm okay with the fifth. Don, are you good with the fifth evening? Yep. Joe? Yeah, we're still talking, you know, six six o'clock, correct? Six o'clock on the fifth. Yep. Yep. Okay. So this would be our regular meeting that should be on the sixth. Yep. Because um, Dan and Don have to leave. So we'll move that to Monday. Does that address all you've got? Yes. Okay. Thanks for mentioning that. So that closes out number 12. We are on to article five review and update. Don, did you have some things you would like to share? Um, yeah, we, uh, we met a week ago, I guess a week ago uh, tomorrow or tonight and uh, well, went through uh, about the first 15 or 16 pages of the revised uh, Article 5. There were several recommendations for changes, uh, some of them small, some of them maybe one or two, maybe a little more uh, different. But uh, were we going to go through that page by page tonight, Gary? You've got copies of the changes as they were made. Yeah, I guess, I mean, you had the changes in your packet. I don't, I just, I guess, assume that you'd probably uh, focus on if there's any concerns about their proposals and focus on those items, but either way works. And I, I had to, I, oh, go ahead, Don. I think it's probably the best idea is that uh, our, our meeting is scheduled for 24th. 24th. Um, and uh, I think it'd be best to have it totally uh, the recommendation and then come in and uh, talk about it in total. There's a lot of interconnection with a lot of things. We got a lot of good, good discussion. It took, uh, I don't know, what were we there? Three and a half, four hours. Yes. So I would be okay with that, Don. Um, there are a couple things I guess I, I don't know, have concerns or question, I guess what, um, what the, the goal is one of them, I guess, specifically is regarding the um, striking the definitions of the manure class systems. And I guess my concern for down the road is, is how do we, um, what's the goal or the thought process for the setbacks? Cause that was discussed at the commission level that those would be based off of those systems. Well, and, and remember, Joe, this is their recommendation uh, to us. We can alter it and approve uh, the direction that we want to go. Uh, I think there was really only one person that maybe strongly felt that uh, it should be eliminated, but. Uh, uh, Basically what it came down to in that regard was 
it was felt and at least a couple of people kind of threw it back and forth of is the only ones that we seemed to really be focused on were was the liquid manure because of the confined hog barns and that seemed to be the primary focus so they didn't think they didn't feel that there was really a need to have the other two at that point but that was the discussion point um i guess my thought on uh, on that and not to bog down right now over it but my just initial thought on that is um we we had some hog barns in our you know in our face call it uh in the last few years but that doesn't mean that that's all we're going to be dealing with in the next uh 20 years and so we should you know plan accordingly um dairies being one uh poultry uh, semi semi solid but but without getting into the weeds i guess or bogging down it sounds like my understanding of the process may be different than what the process is and i my concern i guess don is that i don't want to at the planning and zoning level spend hours upon hours um talking about things that that we you know we identified certain things at the commission level that these for lack of better terms is set in stone and there's to me it's unnecessary to to hash those out at the at the planning and zoning level and offer recommendations that we've already kind of locked ourselves into And maybe that's not what's happening. I just that. I don't. I don't think so, Joe. I. I think uh, when when we started the discussion, I indicated that uh, uh, the expectation from the county commission was that if if there were some item that they felt strongly about, very strongly about, and it was uh, different than what the commission uh, thought. It could certainly be brought to the attention of the commission and decided on, and I, and I think that's where this manure thing kind of was. Uh, most most of the people, I don't think, much cared. Uh, okay. That it that it. I shouldn't say much cared. They they didn't uh, advocate taking it out. Okay. And that's, yeah, and that's a fair, because we did say that too, if that, you know, this is the direction we want to see, but, you know, if there's strong feelings, then, then, you know, open it up again. So that makes sense. Probably the longer discussion was on agribusiness and whether mm -hmm. they, we really wanted to do that or not and do the five acre thing. That seemed to that seemed to be what was discussed the most, and, and, and they basically decided they didn't feel like they wanted agribusiness in there or the five acre for agribusinesses is what it came down to. Really, rural ag, uh, or that was for the uh, egg supply dealers, right? Right, yeah. correct. Hmm. So that's why that struck now. I see. So. That was one of my notes too. So they, it was felt that egg businesses still need 20 acres. Correct. Okay. Interesting. A lot of it, a lot of it, I think Gary, correct me if I'm wrong or Don, but their thought just was that it, it impacts, it impacts so few right. that they thought it would be more confusing and lead to someone <clears throat> opening up an egg business just for purposes of doing mm -hmm. it and then not actually caring. And then wanting to build a house on it. Right. That's yeah. good feedback. Yeah. Good feedback. Okay. Great. Any other comments? Thanks, Don. So we are at commissioner updates. So I will go ahead and start. 
The American Recovery Act has been signed. And I've been listening to calls from the National Association on how this will affect counties across the nation. Um, the CARES Act, we were such a small county last time that we did not receive direct funding from the federal government. They gave all the funding to the state. And then the state was kind enough to allocate us the one and a half million of which we ended up with two and a half million, which was good. Um, and we're certainly very thankful for that. So this act is much more generous. And for every county across the nation, they are being allocated $65.1 billion. And that is being allocated as best as I can tell on a per person basis. So our population. So essentially you take the 65 billion, divide it by the number of people in America, and that's your per person allocation. And that's just under $200 per person. So if you use, depending on which census data you use, we end up here with about 4.4 million. And that's an estimate. Don't quote me, don't hold me to that. Um, that is the National Association's best estimate. You can go out to the NACO.org website and you can find a listing of every county in the nation and what that county is going to get. So you can search Bon Home, Clay, whoever you wanna search. So we have um, how the law is written. And if you care, the law is out there and I can give you page numbers to read. Um, once President Biden signed that document in the law, it said the first trance, which is disbursement of 50% should occur within 60 days. Now, whether the treasury is going to get everything in alignment in order to do that or not, we'll see in 60 days. So essentially half of that 4.4 million, my understanding, we could see in 60 days. We're still trying to get an understanding of what we can spend it on. Um, in the law, there are four main points uh, that are outlined. Um, and I did not write all of those down here, uh, but obviously anything related to COVID, lost revenue for counties, um, and that's certainly uh, important for the counties that um, have sales taxes themselves and things like that. So we'll get creative with, with what we can spend it on. Water, sewer, broadband, um, infrastructure, except roads and bridges. Uh, you can't directly buy a new bridge from my understanding, although um, there were lots of questions being raised on the conference calls about how to maybe get that done. So after that first disbursement in 60 days, the last disbursement would occur a year thereafter. Um, and the intent is for us to spend all of that money by the end of 2024. So essentially we have four years with which to spend the money. Um, and again, it comes direct from the feds, nothing to do with the state. Uh, the treasury has been tasked with um, outlining specifics for what can be um, purchased or utilized in order to uh, claim those funds. Um, there will be reporting and treasury is supposed to design some type of reporting. So everything needs to be kept separate, no different than what we did with the CARES Act funding. So it's all pretty fluid at this point. Um, so all of that could change a little bit. Um, but I did want to hint at, and that's one reason I asked Patty to print out what we currently have allocated for certain things in our county. Um, as we all know, last year we missed out on jail revenue. Um, we missed out on revenue on maybe some other little things that we'll think of. Um, I had sent a question in on ambulance and the shortfall that we have there. Can we utilize some of that as lost revenue as well? So um, it, it's a lot of money and we can certainly do a lot of good things with it here in our county. It's completely separate from municipalities. They have a whole separate pot of money that's going to every small town and municipality. And I have no idea how that system is set up. 
it's different than the counties, very different. Um, so I'm certainly not going to speak on, on their behalf there, but theirs is different. And there's a huge pot of money for broadband in general, economic development through District 3. They'll have access to a, a vast fund uh, with which to invest in our communities. Um, so love it or hate it, it's signed, and it is our job to be responsible with the $4.4 million that we might be able to use. So I'll do my best to keep up on this. I've, I've been asking District 3, um, and they're very unsure at this point on things. In fact, we kind of supply each other with information on that. So um, other than, so does anybody have any questions at this time on, on those? Okay. And then drainage. Um, we have a drainage meeting here this month, and we will again be reviewing changes to our drainage ordinance. And again, I ask if you've got any um, comments uh, or things in the drainage ordinance that you feel need to be addressed, uh, forward those to myself or Mr. Vetter, and we'll make sure those are discussed at our next drainage meeting. Anyone else have updates? Nope. All right. Well, that was item number 14. And we are at public comment. Public comment. Hey, public comment. All right. There being none, public comment is closed. Items for next meeting, which will be on April 5th. Wow. Article five. <laughs> Article five. Yep. Well, we'll work on that because that is three weeks away. So this is one of our, our expanded time periods. So with that, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. I'd move to adjourn. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.